Mike M. Please explain your issue with the gun range the other day. My issue. I'm not sure what you mean, Mike. I, I know what video you're talking about. You're talking about when I was at the wrecking yard and I, I was comically pointing out that here's a middle school and here's the largest indoor gun range in the state of Washington. Kind of funny they're so close. Uh, I didn't have an issue with it though. I was just being funny. Jimmy B. from Gardner, Kansas. For a first-time RV person, what suggestion would you give them when they would start out like you did, uh, fresh out of college and want to become nomadic? You know, Jimmy, I, I, I would say this. Uh, if you're thinking about... It sounds like you're asking if you want to be nomadic. Uh, first of all, I would make sure that you are okay with living in an RV. So, so maybe you get the RV and then you still have a place to park the RV and live your normal life, you know, maybe have it on a friend's property in a driveway. We'll live in the RV right there in the driveway without moving around first, you know. Definitely make sure that you're okay living day to day, cooking food and maintaining life inside the RV before you up and go be nomadic, basically. So uh, I guess I'd, I don't know what stage you're kind of in there, but... Uh, it's kind of two different phases, you know, living in an RV and an RV park plugged in is a lot different than a lot of other stuff to consider, you know, once you start moving around the country uh, where you don't have everything you had to start with. So start off, start off small. Bradford B, how did you teach Jax to be so cool? Aw, I didn't teach him anything. He's naturally that cool. He's loved me since he was a kitten and he just has natural traits. He's an awesome cat. Sam B. from the UK. How did your family and friends react when you told them you were going to live in an RV? I'm looking at moving into one in the new year, and they all think I'm mad. <laughs> uh, probably to start, you know, when I started living the RV life, they weren't very supportive. They didn't understand. They always thought that I could do better and I should have bigger goals. Uh, once YouTube kicked off and they saw that I was happier and smiling and ready to make this a living and then they saw my paychecks and stuff like that i think they all kind of got on board and said hey eric's happy i'm happy joe a from fort lauderdale florida what kind and how many batteries do you have for your 12 volt system these batteries were actually donated to me when i was in lakeland florida uh they are 101 amps a piece they're telecom they're kind of like used in the uh, cell phone tower industry as for backup generators I have four of them, so I have 404 amp hours stored up. They're not in the greatest condition, uh, but they work for me. Yeah, that's what I have. And they're called Power Safe brand. Joshua K. from Duluth, Minnesota. Are you going to replace your generator with another one like off Amazon? Uh, eventually. Uh, it's kind of working right now, so uh, when money's available, yeah. Huck out that own and I'm not going to put any more money. I'm not going to pay 350 for a tune-up that didn't even fix the problem and all the oil change and all that kind of parts and regulator, whatever the problem is. No, we're going to rip it out and we're going to throw in a, another Ryobi generator inverter in there. You bet. Joanne R. from Paradise, California. Brand and model number of the following. Your 12-volt TV, your solar charger, and inverter. I have... Uh, Tell you what, I'll tell you as much information about them as possible and where you can find them. The 12 volt TV, um, it's a Naxa 24 inch ACDC 1080p LED TV sold on Amazon and you will find it, I think it's 209 on Amazon. The solar charger, that's a 40 amp MPPT Renogy charge controller. It's about $219 on Amazon. And the inverter is a Cobra 2000 water, also on Amazon, I think about 149 Yep. Mark R. from Arizona City, Arizona, was wondering what is your favorite food to eat in the RV, and how is the no beer going? Uh, foods? Well, besides pizza. <laughs> um, actually, one of, two of my favorite foods. Uh, one is to, to cook like six, grill up six chicken, chicken patties, and then uh, do some yellow rice and then divide that into three meals. So eat a meal and then have two meals ready to go in the refrigerator that I just microwave up. It's really a lot healthier food too for me. And then just eat some fresh food or something with it. And uh, craft macaroni and cheese. I know, I'm in my 30s and I'm still enjoying mac and cheese. I, really, there's days where I really have a craving for it. Um, and the no beer, yeah, it's going well. I'm really happy being sober. Like, like I said, I, I could do this for a year if I wanted to. And I have no problem staying away from bars and the bar scene. And, 
yeah, we'll, we'll see how that goes, though. Teresa S. from... I don't know. Okay. I went back through your videos trying to find out why you got rid of Bertha. I couldn't find it. Was it mechanical or just too small? I thought it fit your lifestyle better, and you and Jax look so good in it. Thank you, Teresa. There's a, there's a lot of stuff that happened uh, in trading in Bertha for the new RV. And if you want to go back to that area at time, it was mid-August, you know, where I ended up having the opportunity. And uh, Yarvi, he has a YouTube channel. Uh, him and I hooked up and we made the, we made the trade and deal. And uh, when I had the opportunity to get back in an RV like this, I jumped on it because this is me, you know. Van life was fun. That was an interesting six months and 3,400 miles from Florida to Washington State, but this this really is me, believe me. <laughs> uh, Mark D. from, don't know, he has two questions. What did you think of Kevin Harvick's move at the end of Talladega? Yeah, he's, <laughs> he had a special car that day. He, he had a special car, and I know there's some controversy about talking about his, his victory uh, burnouts and stuff like that to hide stuff, but no, he, he had, his car was on. And will you be in Daytona this year? You know, ironically, I will be going through Daytona. I don't know if I'm going to be going to the Daytona 500, though. I might want to switch it up and do different stuff every time I go through places and not repeat. Nothing wrong with having repeat stuff, but I don't know. People don't like to see that on YouTube, so if I do go back, you know, just it'd be a lot of money this time. I don't think I'd get free tickets this time. And, and I don't know. So we'll see. Maybe go to, like, Talladega instead of Daytona or something, a different race in Atlanta or something. We'll see. We'll see. Ronald L. from Louisville, Kentucky. Eric, what is the hardest thing to get used to living in an RV? Just, I'm trying to go back five years to when I made the transition. Uh, just getting used to everything being smaller. Just everything is a smaller portion size. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Annie A. from... Uh, we're thinking about putting solar on our RV. What's the one thing we probably haven't planned on yet? Well, Annie, if you're in the stage where you're thinking about putting solar on the RV, I would say this. So that you don't have any surprises, get your solar panel, your charge controller, your batteries, and hook them up somewhere other than the RV, like at the house, or somewhere where it's not permanent on the RV. Before you start drilling holes and figuring out where it's all going to go, and make sure that that solar system that you have is actually going to work. You know, this is a good time to find out if you needed more battery power or m more wattage of panels or, or a different charge controller to um, regulate the, the charge coming in. Because if you do it and just put it on your RV and start drilling holes and figuring out where all the wires go and then you find out that something isn't right, then it's really hard to tear it all down. So th the biggest thing I can say is at least find what works for you outside the RV first. And then once you've got that package complete and you've drawn off it and practiced with it, then you can start thinking about how it goes on the RV, right? Randall N. in uh, Minneapolis. A oh, bunch of questions here. Okay, go through them. Number one, if unlimited funds and time, what upgrades and purchases for yourself on the RV life would happen? Unlimited. Like I said, brand new RV, 2016 Ford Toga. Yep. Two, what about converting black tank to a second gray tank and toilet to composting? Ah, uh, composting toilet. Sorry, Randall, but you, you bring up something that I probably haven't talked to with my fans. Composting toilets. People love bragging about their composting toilets. Everybody brags about getting a composting toilet. And I don't get it. And I never, ever, ever, ever will get a composting toilet. Okay. Doing number ones and number twos into a bucket and then covering up with dirt, sawdust, or peat moss. You know, it sounds like such an earth-friendly thing and so much cooler. How come nobody ever talks about where you dump this solid waste? I mean, how do, and how do you do it and what a pain it is? Um, there, there's a reason why I like my setup. Why? Because there's free dump stations all around the country. Unlimited dump stations almost. It's, it's already, the RV world is already ready for everything to work exactly like it works. You go to the bathroom in the tank, you drive your motor home, you empty it. It's just, it's simple. It's just a simple process, and there's absolutely nothing wrong. Now, if something happened later on, 10 years from now, and RV dump facilities were just, you know, closed down or charged $50 to dump your waste or something, then, yeah, maybe I would go to a composting toilet. And then, I mean, but finding places to dump my composting toilet on the road, 
and, and the job that that takes and what's involved with it, not something I look forward to. There's probably a reason why nobody's telling you how they empty their composting toilet. Just think of that. They just want to brag about being environmentally friendly. That's all they care about. Sorry, kind of ranted on there. Number three, what about doing a rainwater collection little gutter on the side? Oh, that, like Just Incredible. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like uh, Just Incredible did. Yeah, that's a great idea. I don't know what I would use that water for because I'm not going to put it into my holding tanks or anything because I drink that water and I cook with that water. Uh, I'm not really sure. What would I do? Shower with it only? No, I don't think it would fit me, actually. It, it's cool. It sounds like a great idea to me. It doesn't really fit, though. Uh, five, what about little wind generators on the roof, recharging batteries while in transit? Yes, aerodynamic drag, yada, yada, yada. Yeah, it's a possibility, something I hadn't considered until reading some of these questions. Somebody else brought that up. Uh, yeah. Six, would you go all DC, maybe with one AC outlet, and try to avoid it if you could for max electrical efficiency? You bet. I love DC power. I survive on DC power. Everything is DC power in here. And, and ultimately, the, the two devices, the, uh, the microwave, the coffee pot, and the air conditioner, those three things, uh, I could run those off of my inverter as well. So DC life, you betcha. I'm all for it, especially boondocking. Yep. Seven, do you unplug from any outlet, DC or AC, to avoid parasitic battery drain just from being plugged in. I didn't know that was a thing. I don't know what parasitic means, but uh, at night I actually do unplug everything that's plugged into my power, the power strip, or just flip off the power strip because I feel like the receiver and TV and all that, they might draw something. So that's just something I do naturally. I think that kind of answers your question, but I don't, you know, I don't think about it manually. I don't connect the negative cable of the battery. I just turn off the power that's inverting a lot of that. Uh, eight, can Jax ever be outside off leash on his own without a halter and allowed to run and explore, climb a tree, and actually go after and maybe get one of those taunting crows or another bird? Uh, technology exists now where you could track him if he went out in sight. Uh, as I talked about before, though, no, I'm going to keep my cat on a leash because I don't trust him and I don't want him to get run over. And you're talking about those pet trackers? I, I do want to address the pet trackers because everybody thinks that that would be a great idea for me and my cat. Uh, but look if, if, if you look into it it's really weird you have to set your home base and then it doesn't track gps live but you have to set your home base which is your physical address and then it's not until your animal goes outside like a one mile outside the radius that it alarms you and tells you that he's a mile away and then the gps isn't even live so it's like an hour delay so <laughs> it wouldn't do me any good um the only thing that, that maybe might work for me in tracking jacks would be like those remote control or key finder that run on Bluetooth. So that's a much smaller radius. It would be a lot easier for me to, you know, attach a Bluetooth receiver onto his collar and be able to track it like that. That would work for me. I can't imagine my cat being a mile away before it even tells me that he's a mile away and then I can't even track him. Yeah. So those those pet tracking things, re re read up on them. They're, they're not, all, not all awesome. Marcella M, I think she asked me a question uh, earlier, from Superior, Wisconsin. How do you manage to stay so positive through tough times? I don't think I'm so positive. I, I appreciate that, but uh, I feel like I'm, I'm human like anyone else, and I have raw emotions, and I, and I show those. Uh, every day is a new start, though, and I really believe in having fresh starts and being able to... Uh, get past some of that stuff, but but I'm human. I, I don't think I stay that tough. I think I'm pretty normal. Sue F. from Hayden, Idaho. Regarding boondocking, how do you know if a spot is legal to park an RV overnight? Technically, you don't really know. I mean, if you're only going by, the, if, you're, if you're parking on public streets and it says, you know, parking restrictions, you know, two-hour parking or only Monday through Friday, nine to five, you can kind of interpret what they don't. I mean, it doesn't say free parking on the weekend, but you know that means free parking on the weekends. Of course, then there's some cities that also have ordinance against either living in your vehicle or overnight parking, and you're not going to see signs for those. But I have had, you know, people tell me, not police officers yet or, any, or anyone, but I had residents tell me that those rules are in effect, and I just leave the area and change. And if you don't like having to move, if that would ruin your whole day, if you were already set up and you had to move, and well, then maybe boondocking isn't for you, but I don't mind it that much. Greta A. from, oh, I don't know. Do you get UPS deliveries, and if so, how? This is what I'm, I'm very curious about because I get a lot of UPS deliveries from North Florida. Uh, Greta, I covered that earlier, so I do the, the lockers 
the Amazon lockers, um, a future RV park, or a friend's house in advance. You betcha. James A. from Argyle, New York. We are thinking of a Class C or a Class A RV. There is four of us. Which one do you think would work best? Well, James, I don't think I can really answer that question for you. Uh, first of all, I've never owned a Class A. Uh, never really even owned a, a real Class B. Just Class C's and trailers and a truck camper and stuff like that. And I can't, I can't pick that out for you because I don't know what you need. I'll say this. What you should do is stop worrying about the exterior of the RV, the Class A, the Class C, how it's built on the exterior. What, what, what you should probably do is go in and physically walk through a lot of the different floor models that are available. Excuse me. Uh, check out what works. You know, if you want twin bunks in the back or if you want to if you want to be having to tear down this table every single night for a kid to sleep here in the dining room or both kids going to sleep up top of the cab over area. So, you know, start start looking at interior designs and then decide whether it's going to be a Class C or a Class A or, or a trailer or, or what kind of setup you're going to have, fifth wheel. Uh, but find the floor plan that, that works first. And I feel like I can't really answer that question for everybody. There, there's probably a reason why there's so many different types of RVs and floor plans because everybody's looking for something different. Just got to figure out what you want, James. Oh, I feel like I need a break. Woo! So much on here. I'm going to try to get to you all, though. Thanks for hanging with me here. Rob S. Don't know where he's at, but... I have two questions. Do you have any long-term future plans, and have you ever looked any further into getting sponsorship for your RV travels? No, I have not reached out to any other places for possible sponsorship. I feel like I'm in control, and I like that feeling a lot more. But yes, I do want to be in a newer RV one day. Alan C., from the UK, what can you do to feel safer when being on the road full time? Example, what makes you pick a site, stop over another, and what can you do when static to secure your possessions and yourself? Well, to feel safer, <laughs> I've talked about this before. I, when I boondock in an urban area, I like to have a good mix of residential on one side and commercial on the other side. That way you have people around at night because people live there. And during the day, you have people there because it's a business. Uh, that kind of gives me a little bit of safety because if you think about it, if your alarms are blaring and there's no one there to hear them, well, then the burglar's just going to take everything you got. So if you're off exploring the city and away from your RV, you know, you're, you're not going to hear that. And, and as far as security, I have to also mention this to everybody. Uh, there, there is a reason why I do not talk about security anymore. And that is because, you know, being on YouTube... If I want to talk about something specific, like a firearm or a type of alarm or some type of a security measure in here, I don't want the wrong people to be able to get that information. So what I'm naturally going to do is try to be really vague about answering the question. And being vague is a terrible thing because it makes the people who wanted to know and were sincerely want to know what kind of security, they have no idea what I'm talking about. And it was like, why, why didn't you just say nothing? And then being vague also makes it so that the people that want that information, they actually got enough information to understand exactly what you said. So if you want specifics about RV security, I would recommend you go talk to somebody else who's more comfortable with giving away all their secrets to the public because that's not me. I want... I don't want there to be anything that anybody knows what's going on to keep me safe in the RV and my property safe. Terry G from, well, I'm not sure. Uh, I've been quietly following your adventure since the very early days. If your channel takes off and you can upgrade to a much better rig, what would you choose? A lot of people asking me that question. A new Class C Ford Toyota. Doug R from Landon, Ontario. Hi, Doug. Eric, why would you not put a composting toilet system in your RV? Well, Doug, we did kind of talk about that. You all know how I feel about composting toilets now. That's why. Fernando T., Palm Coast, Florida. I've been following you for some time, and I really like what you're doing. I plan on doing this myself sometime in January. Keep up the great work. My question is, have you ever had anything weird happen to you while out in the woods by yourself, like sounds, sightings, any strange lights? No. I have. I don't have anything weird happen to me out there, but I should mention this. If I'm by myself, once it gets dark, I'm back in the RV with all the blinds closed. I am not the type of person that likes to be out in the dark alone. Now, if I'm with company and we're hanging out and having a good time, you betcha. Uh, but no, I haven't even seen anything weird or strange. I have nothing to report. I haven't seen Bigfoot. I haven't seen anything crazy outside yet. Becky S. from Edmond, Oklahoma. Oh, where did you learn to play guitar? I have enjoyed the music and singing in a couple of videos. Did you start playing when you were very young? Good question, Becky. Thank you for asking me that. No, I didn't even pick up a guitar until I was about 25 years old. 
but that but I should also talk about the fact that I played violin in orchestra in school from the fifth grade until my sophomore year in high school. So that's where I got a lot of my musical education, musical understanding, how to read music and be a part of music. So uh, it's really hard to sing and play the violin. Those, 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 those two uh, activities don't work too well. So when I started seeing people, you know, strumming on a guitar and singing, I thought, man, that'd be fun if I could do that. So I did it. When I was about 25, I bought a guitar and I learned three chords. I learned C, G, and E minor. And I realized that there's actually a lot of classic songs that I could play with those chords, a lot of songs that I could sing to. And so that's what got me. And then I learned some more chords and I'm not very good on the guitar. Honestly, I'm not very good on the guitar. I don't even, I only know one strumming pattern. So, uh, uh, but as long as I can sing and play, I, I think that's what makes me happy, and maybe I'll get better at it here. We'll see. Thomas L. from New York City. If someone were to follow your footsteps and start a nomadic life in a Class C RV and YouTube channel such as yourself, what would your best advice be and why? Ooh. Um, my advice would be try to keep some of your life private. Don't be wide open about everything. But be very clear from the start that this is something extra. And you're not going to be invited into every part of my life for my sanity so I can actually stay sane. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Kenneth M. from Spokane, Washington. In your earlier videos, you went in detail of things you need and your budget. Has that changed? Are there things you have come to find that are not necessary? No, unfortunately, if nothing else, uh, I've had to gain more stuff. I've had to pay for more stuff, you know, AAA and uh, premium insurance on the RV. The TV I didn't have to get, but you know, I keep adding this stuff, you know, this is not, like I said, it's not just a vacation for me. This is my life on the road all the time, so I need as much, you know, stuff to keep me occupied as possible. Uh, my budget has gone up. Yeah. Donnie D. from Holstein, Wisconsin. Are you planning to go to Alaska? Currently not planning. I, I would love to go to Alaska, but we'll see. Lee R. from Topping, Virginia. What brands of RVs do you like? I like Class C's and I like Fords. Period. That's what I like. Stefan B. from Bomelin, Sweden. What are some of your favorite albums you listen to when on the road? Ooh, good question. Uh, my most liked playlist that I listen to while I'm driving down the road in this RV is Motley Crue. I like a lot of those 80s rock type stuff. I also listen to a lot of CCR and Eagles, even some Elvis sometimes. Uh, but actually, I mean, I, I will listen to anything. I'll listen to country. I'll listen to classical. I'll listen to movie themes. Uh, just depends on what kind of mood I'm in. Gord D. What equipment and programs do you use to edit your videos? Well, Gord, check out that link. We talked about it earlier. I'm putting the link in this video, the video to all of the equipment and uh, uh, mounts and stuff. And the programs is Adobe Premiere Pro Creative Cloud. Jordan H. from, Jordi from Holland. Do you ever have the thought to visit Europe? Yes, I have the thought. We will see. We will see. Stuart K. from, no, I don't see it. Uh... I've enjoyed your travels and tribulations since last December. I now have my own RV since September this year in the UK. By your standard, it's only a baby on which returns 35 miles per gallon. I can't imagine how you cope with MPG of six to seven miles. Actually, it's been under six lately. Uh, at the moment, I have made my way from Sheffield to South Yorkshire to firm blah, 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 tips and get your, you're very welcome, Stuart. Thank you. Ron F. from Port Angeles, Washington. Nice. Just want to say hi. Well, hi, Ron. Uh, Nico J. from the UK. Do you ever think you will live in a caravan? And if so, which brand? Hmm. I don't think I'll ever go back to the van life. I think Class C is probably just going to be where I stay. Mike S. from Wesley Chapel, Florida. When planning your boondocking spots, how do you make sure you don't end up in an unsafe area? I don't really. Uh, it's a trial and error. It's exciting. You, you never know. If something, if there's something I don't like, I will move. You know, I'll be quiet and listen around and see what's going on. And, and I, I'm not afraid to just move to a different location if I don't like something. Sean R. from Langley, B.C. How many years are those solar panels good for? And is there any maintenance required? Are they repairable if they get broken or damaged? Don't know the answer to all of those, uh, but you ask how long they're good for. You know, uh, that, that, that is something I know. The Kyocera 250 that I have it says that it's good for 15 years, and at 15 years it only loses 90% efficiency. So a lot of the panels are rated to whatever they lose in a certain amount of years. 
uh, I think the one I have is really good. Uh, and it, it was only a few years old when I bought it. So, yeah, pretty good. Audrey Lynn's RV Life. You were in Washington quite a while before leaving the area. How long were you living in RVs, going to school and work before finally hitting the open road? Um, technically, I moved into my first RV a month before I started community college. So the entire community college and going to Evergreen to get my bachelor's, I was in an RV of some, some type. So uh, William R. E and J, Olga needs to have the leg lamp out. Did you save it? <laughs> no, I didn't save it. I got rid of like 30% of the stuff from Tilly when I moved into the van in Florida. And I'm still torn on the idea. You know, I don't know if I want to make this RV resemble Tilly or if I want to give it a new identity. I'm really torn on that, you know? I even started looking at the Han Solo posters for the refrigerator if I wanted to do that. And I'm, I'm not sure if I want it to feel like old nostalgic Tilly or if I want to give it its own identity. Rem remains to be seen what I'm going to do just yet. Ken L. Just curiously wondering, have you ever considered doing the RV YouTube life with a companion, like a girlfriend? Is it possible to do what you're doing being in a relationship? Well, of course it's possible. Of course it's possible. And yes, I have considered traveling with a girlfriend, but uh, I'm not looking. I'm not trying to make that happen right now. So if something like that were to happen, sure, it would happen right here in this RV. You know, we, we, we would start our nomadic life. But in my experience, uh, everyone I've met so far has had a, you know, a stable place where they've had to, they can't be moving, you know. So it'd be really hard to fall in love with someone and then be like, oh, you know, they have a, a brick and mortar job where they have to report to. Well, how do you, how do you get along with, you know, what do you do? It's going to be, you know, I'm going to want to go this way. They're going to want to stay there. How do you mend that together? So the only way it would work for me physically right now is if I met someone right now that had a job or some kind of artwork that they could make on the road and sell at trade shows or something. And, you know, we could just jump right into it. Otherwise, I don't see how I'd ever have any time to spend any valuable time with one person uh, to be able to fall in love with them or think about, you know, being with them for, for a while. So, and, but, but again, yeah, it's totally possible. I don't know about having kids in an RV this size, but two people traveling in this RV that I have right now, you betcha. It's definitely possible and definitely something I would consider. Rex M from Prescott, Arizona. You have commented in the past about reading a book, and you never mentioned what books you have read, be it science fiction, sports, art, astronomy, or whatever. What do you read? I guess you're right. True crime. I love true crime. I love and rule books, but any kind of true crime, as well as my TV shows, I love all of the, the, the real true crime type stuff. I don't know why that interests me so much, but that, that's what I like. Damien P. from Cheshire, UK. What would your backup plan be should something bad happen to Olga? Well, geez, I mean, some of the worst stuff that could happen to Olga would be to have the engine go out or have the transmission go out. That those, those would be very, very bad things to have to go out. And uh, if that happens, it's okay. We're going to replace them. <laughs> uh, what I would probably have to do is contact someone at like a wrecking yard or somewhere and be like, hey, you know, I, I want to get this engine or transmission fixed, and but it's going to take next month's paycheck, so I need two or three weeks to come up with the money. So can I rent a spot here at your at your RV shop and kind of work as overnight security until I get the money to do it, you know? So it's going to if something bad happens to Olga, it's going to delay me. It's going to change my route. It's going to change how things happen. But I'm ready for it, and I'm not going to be depressed when it happens. Oop. Cameron P., where do you see yourself in 10 years? He's in Sydney, Australia. In an RV, still making videos, still sharing my life. And also, have you ever had to deal with depression or any other mental illness? Well, I guess when you say deal with it, you mean me or somebody else no i don't have depression sometimes i feel like i have anxiety but I've, I've never been diagnosed with anything like that and i've never had a girlfriend or a close family member uh deal with depression no. thomas b from jacksonville florida i know you stayed in jacks once but have you considered staying at rb city during the rival florida georgia football game it's dubbed the world's largest outdoor cocktail party in the world sports Spots for RVs go fast, and you'll pony up some money to get a spot. But everyone I've talked to that did it said it's worth it. And the experience. Google search the Florida Georgia College football rivalry online. No, I never even heard of that, Thomas. Didn't even know it existed. Thank you all. I will have to look into that. <laughs> Tammy D. from High Ridge, Missouri. Tell us about the greatest random act of kindness shown to you by someone that has crossed your path during your travels. Hands down, camper, van, Kevin. The most kind person I know absolutely bailed my butt out of so much trouble down there in in Florida uh, 
giving me birth of the van, giving me an RV to get home to. Uh, really bailed my butt out. And also Florida. Florida's a great place. RV prepper Wayne, helping me fix the brakes, helping me fix the engine, ticking tie rod in the engine, everything that he did on Tilly the Tioga. Uh, yeah, some, some great people. So camper van Kevin and RV prepper Wayne. Awesome people. Changed my life. Tammy D. Oh, she also asked, tell us about your strangest or funniest encounter with a fan that has recognized you. <laughs> I don't really have too many crazy ones. and I don't even know if it's funny, but uh, when I was in Tilly in the summer last year in somewhere in Capital State Forest, I was camping and there were some tent campers nearby and a lady came over and asked if I had a Band-Aid and triple antibiotic. I said, actually, yeah, of course I do. You know, so I, I gave her that, and she seemed happy. She came back like 10 minutes later, knocked on my door, and said, I can't believe I, I, I didn't even recognize it was you. I mean, I, I knew I recognized you, but I didn't know who you were. You're a nomadic fanatic. So she, she recognized me, and then she asked me if I had uh, tweezers and, and toenail clippers and stuff. And what, what it ended up happening was she kept coming back, and everything she was asking for, I had. You know, um, a can opener. She didn't bring a can opener. Like their family didn't have it. They, they had kids over there and her husband. And she was the one coming back to ask all these stuff. And she was, she was just like hilarious. She was like, it's so funny that you have every single weird thing that we don't have. How are you so prepared? You know, and I ended up telling her, you know, well, this isn't really a vacation for me. This is my entire house. So everything that you have at your house that you don't have with you right now, it, it's probably a good idea. I'm going to have it with me because I do this full time. So I mean, yeah, it makes sense that I would have everything, but it does kind of tickle me sometimes. I get to a campground, you know, I, I, I think if there's something you forgot and you're dry camping in your tent, go find an RVer, because most likely they're going to have what, what you need. And that was kind of a funny experience. I get a lot of people like that that, that look at me kind of weird, like they, they recognize me, they feel like they know me, but they don't know who I am. And then it, it dawns on them, oh, wait! Or like, sometimes people are like, are you like a celebrity? Are you on TV or something? I'm on YouTube with my cat, and then all of a sudden, oh, yeah, yeah, nomadic fanatic. Yep, yep. Paula D. from Detroit, Michigan. Hey, Eric, do you use streaming devices such as Roku for your TV entertainment, and which would you suggest? No, I don't pay for anything streaming through the Internet. Why? Because I boondock, and Internet is very unlikely, and when I do get it, it's really cruddy Internet that it'll just be buffering and it won't even work. So I'm not going to pay for any of those subscriptions. What I do pay for now is YouTube Red. I'm a YouTube Red subscriber. It's $10 a month. That enables me to not have ads on my videos, as well as the option, when I'm in Starbucks on my laptop, I can save the videos for watching later, which is great for me. That, that, that's worth $10 right there, because all the RV channels like Camper Van Kevin and Gone with the Winds and Just Incredible and Wanderlust to State, Living Free, all those ones that I like to watch, I can save them on my laptop while in Starbucks, come back to the RV, hook up my laptop to this where I don't have internet, have jacks in my lap, and then watch the videos at my convenience in my home. That's why I like it. Uh, Joe A. from Shingle Springs, California. How did you get started with RVs in the first place? Also, how did Jax come to be your traveling partner? Um, like I've kind of said before, I think um, I, I wanted to live the RV lifestyle. Me and my girlfriend were going different directions. So as soon as we broke up and Jax picked me at eight weeks old, we bought my first RV and haven't looked back since. <laughs> Alan L. from South Carolina. You and a couple others that I follow regularly on YouTube have inspired me to consider full-time in an RV soon. Here are my questions. One, I will still need to bring in an income and do have something I can most likely do remotely, but will need reliable internet cell phone coverage. How difficult is it to get on the road and the best provider suggested equipment? Jeez, I, I can't help you there. Uh, internet? No, I'm not going to pay for internet. I you, You'll see some of the really nice Class A's. They have a $20,000 internet satellite system on the roof and then they pay a monthly subscription not likely that's going to happen for me i'm just going to get free wi-fi but for internet I, I like verizon and at&t and i like having two providers that way if one doesn't work there's a chance the other one might uh, two what is a realistic budget for full timing i know there are a lot of variables a realistic budget well i'm on youtube i have a lot of expenses plus i mean my Gas alone is $705 a month to travel. Uh, my, my budget right now is $1,100 a month for the lifestyle I live right now. Uh, but that's going to change with everybody, I think. Three, how many miles a day do you typically travel? 45. That's my average. Cool. Uh, Renee C. Uh, from Auburn, Maine. That's a few of them. Uh, 
with all your travels, have you ever met up with a handicapped RVer? If so, describe their setup. I don't think so. But I don't really talk to a whole lot of RVers or pay attention to them. I like to give them their privacy. Uh, I certainly haven't interviewed anybody that had any special needs or stuff like that, but I'd be interested to see how they've kind of adapted and customized their rig uh, to help out with that. And then she also asked, would you consider a trip to Maine? I would consider it, of course. I'm um, not going to go up there this time, but eventually maybe yes. Justin C. from Praha, Czech Republic, Europe. What do you think about so-called illegal aliens that are working in USA in lower positions as dishwashers, bussers, and restaurants, etc.? Uh, well, Justin, that question, I mean, that's... I, I don't really consider it any of my business. Uh, if it doesn't affect me, then I'm not really going to have an opinion on it. There's no sense debating or talking about stuff that really doesn't affect me at all. Uh, it's not like they're taking my jobs away, so I don't, I don't, I'm not butthurt about that or anything. Uh, Jeremy W. from Cincinnati, Ohio. As a future social worker, I am concerned with one's mental, physical, and social well-being. Are you able to get adequate medical, dental, and other health care from the road? Well, I'm paying for it. Uh, medical, yeah. I can get all my prescriptions from Walmarts. That's great. Uh, I have used urgent care facilities on the road because I don't really get to see my primary doctor. Dental? No, I can't get dental in Washington State. It's, I've been trying to get dental for like three years now. I only have 41, uh, 41 providers that are on my list of approved with my plan, and none of them have ever been accepting new patients. Ever. So I have no idea how to get dental. And uh, mental health, I don't have any problems or need for that right now. I talk to my cat just fine. So, <laughs> Len R. Hi, Eric. I live in a sailboat here in Seattle, and I see a lot of parallels between RV living and boat life. Have you ever spent any time on a boat? I agree with you. There are a lot of parallels. A boat seems like an even tinier space, though. Uh, but no, I've never had any desire to be on a boat. I feel like the salt water that you live on, you know, it's eating away and rotting away your vessel. And it's like, why would you live on something that's, you know, deteriorating your RV, your, your, your recreational vehicle? So I don't have any passion for it, but I... I I interviewed uh, Dale in Seattle for my documentary, and that was really interesting. Sean B. This would probably be sound like a job interview question, so apologies in advance. What do you see as your biggest goal for the next five years? To make it big, to get a new RV, and keep exploring new stuff, and never settle down. <laughs> Michael B. from Hampton Roads, Virginia. You are a young person. I'm in my 30s. So I wonder about your future retirement income plans and current health care insurance and the like. If self-employed and such, how are Social Security payments processed? They can be a big chunk. Yeah, annually, they are a big chunk. Uh, I would like to be able to put more aside month to month rather than spend the last or the first three months of the year putting aside huge chunks in my paycheck to pay for it. Um, it's just kind of, kind of the go. It's just part that, just something you have to consider if you're going to be self-employed and pay your own taxes you just have to be on top of it uh, keep keep good documents on your computer though day to day kick flip from sweden how much money do you get from youtube from your videos or do you have several alternatives to making money uh i'm not going to talk about how much money because that that's just kind of a personal thing i will say this i live comfortably i make way more money than i did working full-time at walmart doug c from pensacola as a current dreamer with a desire to break the chains and live nomadic lifestyle i have a couple questions that you may get a lot one when you're on the move what would you consider your ideal travel time and or distance per day 45 that's what i'm trying to do that's what i'm doing and i'm comfortable with that two for those of us who are still tied down to a static job but don't have mad tech skills some fresh ideas for developing a mobile source of income that could support lifestyle would be awesome I'm sorry, Doug, I don't have any of those ideas, but there's lots of ideas out there. I love people that do the crafts and then go to, like, swap meets and, and trading stuff. I've heard of people buying stuff and then selling them on, on eBay because, you know, you can make a profit that way. Uh, there's a lot of ideas. I don't have any of those ideas because I have my way. So I might have to ask somebody else, or maybe somebody can reply on here and, and answer that question for Doug. Lee S. from Brunswick, Georgia. What do you do for full-time job? Google is my full-time full -time job. That's where I get my income. I pay my taxes and I pay my bills. Terrence B. from Dayton, Ohio. I'm recently divorced and don't have anything to tie me down as far as staying here. I would like to travel a little bit. Do you have any tips or advice to give? How to get money on the road? Is it better alone or to have someone with you? How do you transition from living in the house and on the road? Uh, everybody's going to be different, Terrence. Uh, I 
I got into it, eased into it, loved it, and I like it the way it's working, but there's lots of different ways to live on the road, so, yeah. Stuart B. from Northampton, UK. What are the best options available for earning money while living in the camper van on the move? I, I have no idea what the options are. I don't know. I just know what I do. I make videos, and I'm a YouTube partner. Heidi T. from Middleborough. Wow, I just realized I don't know what the... M.A. Is that Massachusetts? I think. Sorry, I don't even know what the abbreviations is. But a while back, you did a video on your cost of living in your RV. I'm curious how that has changed. And also, what was your cost of living during around the U.S. road trip? I'm still maintaining that $1,100 budget. I'm sticking to that. With all the costs that I have associated, my budget is $1,100. Kyan D. from Ireland. How much does your RV cost? So, how much did I pay for the RV? I traded the RV. Um, my RV is valued at, I think, $5,400. Uh, for Tilly the Tioga, the one I had before, I paid $3,750. $3,750 for that RV off Craigslist. Gary T. from Ecuador, South America. You do a great job editing videos. Thank you. I'm curious how much training education you've had in that area is just natural town. No, it's there's no training. In fact, I got into video production at Evergreen just based on me trying out different stuff. Uh, I got in through a loophole with uh, uh, music and, and an audio, audio recording. Didn't know a whole lot about video, but you know, you're sitting in front of a computer long enough, you're going to keep getting better at it, I think. Greg S., how do you make money from Indiana? I already talked about that. I'm a YouTube partner. I get paid by Google. Oh, that's the end. Holy cow, we got through. Okay, again, I'm sorry for all the comments and questions that I didn't get to on here. Again, if, you, if I didn't like your question on the Facebook feed, do it again next time I do it, and I will try to cover everybody else's question. <sighs> Thank you. Talk to you guys later. You guys want to see Jax? I'm going to have to wake him up because he's sleeping, though. He's a tired kitty. Oh, I'm exhausted. I'll go up here and show Jax. Hey, buddy. Hi, buddy. Wake up time and say hi. Oh, stretches. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good day. See you later. Hey guys, Jax here, along with his human servant, Eric. Thanks for watching our RV channel. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up below. Uh, don't forget to watch all of our other videos. we got some great material out there. Subscribe to our channel so you can get the latest updates here on the road. Can you say hi? Talk to you guys later.